what do I say to someone I've trained and later claims, this person claims that a certain thing was not covered in the training? Uh, in addition to the question says, obviously excuses. Obviously excuses. So this is a, this is a really pretty common question of how do you handle these situations? And I've actually been lucky enough in my life to have run a lot of training into a lot of different situations, mostly in the military. And I've absolutely had this happen. And there's one thing that I do when this happens, and you can probably guess what it is. I take ownership of it. (laughs) So check it out. If somebody comes to me and says, oh, you were supposed to train us on X and you didn't, and I know that I did, and it was in the curriculum and we covered it. I say, I don't say, no, I trained you and here it is. No, I say, okay, let's get it trained then. What do I got to do? Here it is. Let me redo the curriculum. Let me show it to you again. Because here's the thing, as a trainer, it's not just your job. And this is what I used to tell my guys when I ran training, the guys that were the instructor cadre, I'd say, listen, it isn't your job just to run the training, just to provide the training. Mm -hmm. It is your job to ensure that the training is absorbed. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That's a big difference between philosophies of training. I, my goal when I'm training someone is to make sure that the training is absorbed into the mind. Otherwise go watch a YouTube video because a YouTube video, you can see the same instruction, but no, I need to seek you out and say, okay, where, where did you miss it? Where, and also, where did I fail in my training? If yeah. I covered it, why don't you remember it? Yeah. That means I didn't cover it well enough or I didn't teach it well enough. Yeah. And I think that you, you then you retrain them. You get them up to speed. At some point, they're going to realize that you did train them. I mean, if they truly forgot or even if they didn't forget but they're just placing the blame on you, yeah. they're going to realize that you know. They're going to know that you know that you trained them yeah, yeah. when they when you reflect on the same information and do it again. So I think that's a pretty simple answer. Uh, when someone is saying you haven't trained them, take responsibility for it, take ownership for it, and say, okay, lo- then let me get you trained on it. My, my apologies. I'm here to train you. Let me make sure that I train you and make sure that you absorb it. Yeah. Let's go. I think that your way of training should be – done or performed with kids as well like parents with their kids you know how because you, know, you know how the kid the kid's misbehaving yeah. and the parents are like i don't know why he does that i told him not to pitch a fit well yeah i know you probably told him or you went through the motions of telling him or whatever but man you gotta you gotta train them and make sure that's absorbed you know absolutely so and i always kind of think of it this way not kind of i really think of it this way where if your kid is misbehaving it's something you did or didn't do. Of course. So you can't really sit there and be like, oh, blaming the kid for misbehaving or whatever. Or- yeah, you know, you're, you're right. I wonder, isn't it weird that you can have families where one kid can go to, could go to high school and do well and do great on their SATs and get into a great college and go, to, and go be a doctor mm-hmm. and the other kid can become a heroin addict? Yep. Isn't that strange? It it's interesting, but I and I think a long time ago I, I would talk to you about this, like a long time. And ago. how do we blame the parents? And well, that's the thing. That's the that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying blame the parents. I'm not saying that because because that would that would, if you're blaming them, that's like saying it's so easy. Why didn't you do that? I blame mm-hmm. you. You know, kind of thing. It's not easy, but there's so many different dynamics to every kid's experience. So you know how, and this is how the conversation kind of, if I remember correctly, kind of started when you were like, "Hey, I have you know four kids or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're just different." They you are know? And, true. Um, then I said. This is before I had kids, by the way. So you weren't really oh, feeling this is what back I was. In the day. Yeah, you you didn't you didn't really care about that much. Well, not to say you didn't. So what did you say? Anyway, I said um, I said okay. Yeah, it's kind of complicated. So uh oh, <laughs> kids are different. Yeah, but they're not just different. Like that's not it. That's it's not nature the and nurture. Yes, 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 fully. So consider every kid's starting point is different. So you can't expect everyone, every kid's ending point to be the same, even though they go through the same experience. True. Just being the second born, you're starting out as a completely different human being. Right. Just being two years, one year, five years younger than your older brother. That's so those minor thing. variables end up creating some major, major. differences. Yes. yes, of course. So at, at certain points in development, they're going to have 
kind of the same needs, but in a different environment. So the way that you fulfilled those same needs with the first kid are going to look different as far as them being translated with the second kid and the third kid and the fourth, you know, how deep, right. however many kids you have. So you'd so have to make different. slight adaptations to what you did to the second kid exactly. than the first. And to keep a handle of all those dynamics is, it's hard. So that's why it's like, well, it's yeah, not that easy. not only that, it's not an exact science. <laughs> yeah. And, and the way kids react way people it's not just we're not, we're not just talking about kids here we're talking about people yep. because you get different people that you hire at different times or different people that join platoons at different times and they have a different attitude so yeah you yep. got to adjust but the the bottom line is the thing that remains constant through all this is that if you're trying to impart knowledge on people you need to take responsibility not just for showing them the knowledge but to making sure that they absorb the knowledge and the primary methodology of doing that is by explaining to people why they're doing what they're doing and why you're telling them this and why this occurs yeah. So if, like you said, you tell your kid, don't have a temper tantrum, and then you never explain to them, here's why you don't want to have a temper tantrum. When you're doing this, you could hurt yourself. You could hurt other people. You're going to do things that regret. You're going to like, break something in the house. I can't control you. I can't bring you anywhere. If you're going to act like this, that means we can't go out and have fun. So you got to explain why. Right. And once you explain why, then people have a better chance of absorbing the information. But yes, you as a trainer, parent, leader, teacher has the responsibility not just to impart knowledge, but to ensure that the knowledge is absorbed. Yeah. Rant complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and of course, like I said, it's for parenting, it's not like just that easy, you know? No. I mean, it, parenting it, is very difficult leadership situation. So it's really a lot like Plinko. Really? <laughs> Consider it. You know what I mean? You start at a different point and uh, all these variables. Well, but yeah, there you go.